Good evening. This is Jennifer Carlson for video number two for EDAD 610. Um, when I think back to my educational experience, K through six, K through eight, not a lot of recollection. Um, high school is a little different, and then my university time was even uh, was better. So when I think about what areas of student-centered learning do I recall? Minimal amounts in elementary school and middle school. I started to see a little more focus on like higher teacher expectations in high school um, and maybe even a little bit of relationship creating um, that caring and respectful relationship component, but it wasn't really until college where I saw um, the academic press, like teachers taking action to make sure that what um, they were doing was allowing me to strive in the classwork or the coursework that I was in um, and instructional leadership at that point. When I think about um, what's been most helpful um, for me right now, I really, really focus on the caring and the respectful relationships. Um, like the chapter one said, in the end, it's all about relationships, and this is where I focus most of my attention. I work with a very specialized group of students um, that struggle academically. A special education can be a little bit challenging, and we deal with a lot of behavior issues. Um, and so uh, the students that I work with tend to feel like they don't ever fit in academically, so I really, really seek out relationship because I need to understand where they're coming from. <clears throat> how they learn, um, what their strengths are, where their areas of weakness are, and really focus on develop focus on developing the parts of their life that provide them the most success. And in turn, then I really take a step back and I try and create the most effective learning environment, the safest environment for them. And I know we spent a lot of time talking in the past about, you know, uh, safety, like physical safety awareness, but we need to consider to the emotional safety and the ability to be in a learning environment where it's okay to fail and not be mocked or made fun of. Um, I need my students to be in a classroom where it's okay to have the wrong answer because failing is just another way to learn more. Um, and so that component of um, this student-centered sort of focus has been, those have been the two most important for me. I think for a while, as far back as I can recall, that instructional leadership component didn't really exist. I don't think teachers really focused on their development so much. Um, I, I don't know. I think my personal opinion, it's been this new generation of instruction that's really called for a reflective component to teaching, not just about am I teaching the curriculum, but are the students learning? And if they're not learning, what could I do personally to reinvent or re-teach in a manner that um, allows my students to gain access to the curriculum? So uh, I see the instructional leadership component sort of changing a little bit. I have high expectations for my students, but I think really that's more about behavior and respect than test scores. Maybe in a different environment or a di different curriculum, those things might change. Um, one of the things that I liked the most that I read from ch this chapter was that student-centered learning environment is the sum of total interactions of the school culture, climate, people, behaviors, and behaviors that protect every child's physical and emotional safety and personalize education in ways that allow each one to master a high-challenge standard-based curriculum. I mean, that totally encompasses everything that I seek to do in education.